Welcome to week five, an overview of the Skills Development Act. In this week, you critique the applicability of the Skills Development Act in employment law. You will read the articles that provide real examples of the applicability of the skills development in the protection and enhancement of skills. In various sectors, such as the education sector and the responsibility of the employer to ensure training, enhancing of the skill set in accordance with the National Strategic Plan. The Skills Development Act 97 of 1998 intends to provide an institutional framework to devise and implement national sector and workplace strategies to develop and improve the skills of the South African workforce. To integrate those strategies within the national qualifications framework contemplated in the South African Qualifications Authority Act of 1995. To provide for learnerships that lead to recognized occupational qualifications. To provide for the financing of skills development by means of a levy grant scheme and a national skills fund. To provide for and regulate employment services and to provide for matters connected therewith. These are the objectives of the Skills Development Act. The Skills Development Act comprises of eight chapters that was amended in 2014. It is an act that has not been amended for a period of time. The act is essential and provides a watchdog context of ensuring that government and employers subsidize learnership programs and that there are continuous skills programs that the Department of Labor also takes accountability for the Skills Development Training Planning Unit. The financing of money for the National Fund for Skills and Management thereof. The purpose of this Act is to develop the skills of the South African workforce, to improve the quality of life of workers, the prospects of work and labor mobility, to improve productivity in the workforce, and competitiveness of employers, to promote self-employment and to improve delivery of social services, to increase the levels of investment in education and training in the labor market, and to improve the return on that investment, to encourage employers to use the workplace as an active learning environment, to provide employees with the opportunities to acquire new skills, to provide opportunities for new entrants to enter labor market to gain work experience and to employ persons who find it difficult to be employed, to encourage workers to participate in leadership and other training programs, to improve the employment prospects of persons previously disadvantaged by unfair discrimination and redress those disadvantages through training and education, to ensure the quality of education and training in the workplace to assist work seekers to find work, retrench workers to re-enter the labor market, employers to find qualified employees, and to provide and regulate employment services. Those purposes are to be achieved by establishing an institutional and financial framework comprising the National Skills Authority, the National Skills Fund, a Skills Development Levy Grant Scheme as contemplated in the Skills Development Levies Act, CETAs, Labour Centres and the Skills Development Planning Unit, encouraging partnerships between the public and private sectors of the economy to provide education and training in the workplace and cooperate with the South African Qualifications Authority. In this week, you need to assess all aspects of your learning material in conjunction with the objectives of the Act.